Have you ever wondered why this is and? One day, I was just casually scrolling the internet and randomly looked at my keyboard to notice the good old trusty ampersand, and it struck me. What even is that name? Ampersand. How did this squiggle end up becoming and, and why is it used everywhere around the world? And that pulled me down a rabbit hole deeper than I could possibly imagine. So, why do we call this thing the ampersand? The name ampersand is a simplification of the phrase and per se and, literally meaning and by itself and. I know it sounds dumb, but there's a good reason for it. Some letters in the alphabet are also words, like A or I. But if you were referring to the letter specifically, you need to do something to differentiate it from the word's meaning. So people used per se to specify they were talking about the symbol rather than the word. Kind of like how we use quote unquote to specify a word from a sentence. If I said I is a straight line at times, you'd think I'm talking gibberish. So to make more sense, I'd need to say I per se I is a straight line at times. English really sucks. A funny fact that you might not have known is that before the 1800s, ampersand was the 27th letter of the English alphabet. I'm not kidding, they even had an alphabet song for it. The poor students had to say and per se and every single day. Because of how uncomfortable it is to say, kids just started simplifying, mashing the word together and turned and per se and into ampersand. A few generations later, ampersand was kicked out of the alphabet. Kind of like how Pluto was kicked out of being considered a planet. Rest in peace, Pluto. But that's not the real start of the story. Let's go a little further back to the first century. This is the first ever and. I know it doesn't look like an and and more like an ET, and that's because it is. Back in the first century, English wasn't invented yet, so ancient Romans had to use its great grandmother, Latin. Et is the Latin word for and. For the super nerds out there, this is why scientific references use et al, which means and others when listing names. Now the real question is, how did this become this? And the answer is that people are lazy. The ancient Roman people were getting annoyed when they had to write et every time they wanted to write a list, so they decided to do something unheard of before. They fused them. Alright, I lied. It isn't unheard of. Everyone's combined letters before. It's basically just cursive writing. The technical term for it is called a ligature, where two different symbols are combined to form a glyph. I'm not going to go into ligatures because then I don't think I'd be able to find my way out of this rabbit hole. Here's the first five iterations of the ligature et. The first comes from the year 79 AD and the fifth from the year 344. With some of them, you can kind of see the et that it came from, like 3 and uh, maybe 4? But 1, 2, 5, and 6 look like something an AI image generator spat out. It's only once you go down to example 19, yes there's more, which was found in a manuscript in the year 744, that it starts to look like the ampersand we know today. Just look at these, some of them look nothing like an et. These look more like a capital G. These three look like some alien hieroglyphs. And what happened here? From 31 to 36, there was some progress. Then someone completely veered off track and started making it look like a deformed G again. Apparently this one was found in a Scottish book in the 9th century, but the next one's English from the 10th century, so it has no excuses. This was back when only 1% of the population were literate, so only 1% of people could actually write. Judging by this person's writing, I think it might have been 0%. Once we get past whatever happened here, we get into the 11th century, where the et is finally starting to look consistent. Except, no, it's not consistent, because welcome to the Middle Ages, where all of these ands were created. What even are these? Is that a J? Naruto? And just randomly in the 16th century, the et looks identical to the ampersand today, and then we go back to the AI vomit. By this point, the et ligature started to become more consistent in Italy around 1788, perhaps due to the printing press becoming more widespread, providing some consistent standards for what the et ligature should be. I'm not going to go into the origins of the printing press. Yes, it was invented in Germany in the 1400s, so yes, the ampersand should have been consistent way before now, but humans are lazy. Even if they had a consistent and, it probably varied from place to place, and individuals probably just sucked at writing it neatly. And at this point, there's something I must tell you. I've been withholding an important piece of information that might make you want to pull your hair out. There was another symbol that meant and, called the Tyronean et, and it looked like this. It existed side by side with the et that became our ampersand. This et came from a system of shorthand symbols written by Marcus Tullius Tiro. Tiro was a former slave that went on to become a secretary to Marcus Tullius Cicero, a lawyer, philosopher, and writer that was influential during the first century BC. Most of the symbols Tiro created while he worked for Cicero lost relevance over the centuries, but surprisingly, this Tyronean et managed to survive and is still 
still used today in Ireland. But I asked an Irish person if he recognised the symbol and he didn't, so take that with a grain of salt. I'm gonna be honest, I had no idea this existed, and I doubt any of you did either. Apparently, this is the first and symbol, because it was made in the 1st century BC. Meanwhile, the ligature et was made in the 1st century AD within the Roman Empire. But who knows, there might have been another person who tried to simplify and before all these guys, but they didn't get popular enough to be written in history, so sucks to be them, am I right? Ha ha ha! This is getting to the point where only historians would know what the heck these symbols are. This might be a sign that I've gone in too deep. If you're wondering why this didn't become the and we use today, blame the Renaissance people for choosing the more popular Italian et when they adapted their Latin characters into the printing press. I mean, let's be real, he just drew a miniature 7 and called it a day. I had to go find a Wayback Machine site in full German to find this list by the way, so please, like this video and subscribe. This rabbit hole is endless. And finally, the million dollar question. Why is the ampersand so commonly used today? And the answer, yet again, is because people are lazy. And is used about 4% of the time in English, so everyone has used it consistently while writing. But writing all of it down is annoying. You first have to write down an A, then an N, then a D, and oh no, you made the D too long and have to rewrite it, but your teachers changed PowerPoint slides already, so you can't finish the point they were explaining and lost track of the class and need to go review the slides at home to get the notes down again. It's easier for people to just draw squiggles and avoid the hassle. Or just don't write down notes in class. You've probably been told not to use the ampersand for essays in school because it isn't considered professional language. Just like how you wanted to use abbreviations like coulda, woulda, shoulda, but you didn't. Well funnily enough, once you enter the real world, people stop caring about how formal your language is. Except of course, if you work somewhere where the average employee wears white collar button ups and have fully booked therapist appointments for the next 18 months of their lives. But for some reason, all these billion dollar companies find it acceptable to put the ampersand in their logos. Now, I'm sorry I'm the one that has to tell you this random person on the internet, but the teachers were lying to you. So, now you know how this random squiggle became and, and that in some alternate reality, this could have been and, and the most important fact of all, that people are lazy. They were too lazy to just write two simple letters, they were too lazy to say the 27th letter of the alphabet so they had to kick it out, and they were too lazy to just write and. Funnily enough, my chemistry teacher wrote her amp sense like this, and it took a solid minute for me to recognise that she meant and, and that it wasn't another dumb chemistry symbol we had to learn. Thanks for watching until the end. Okay, bye.